Welcome to the web series, Exploring 9-11, The World Before and After, a production of the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. I'm Clifford Channon. I'm speaking today with Joel Myrowitz. Uh, Mr. Myrowitz is an award-winning photographer whose work has appeared in over 350 exhibitions in museums and galleries around the world. He was born in New York. A retrospective book spanning his entire 45-year career is going to be published in the spring of 2010 by Faden Press. Uh, we're speaking today in particular uh, about one element in that long and distinguished career, uh, the book Aftermath, the World Trade Center Archive. Uh, Mr. Myrowitz spent nine months on the site almost immediately after the attacks, up until the point at which the site was cleared, and has documented that you know, with a series of uh, remarkable photographs uh, in this book. Uh, one of the first things we talk about in this context, but it's particularly relevant in speaking to you, is the story of where you were and how you learned of the attacks of 9-11. Hmm. On that day, I was in Chatham, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. I was photographing um, on an assignment there. I live in Provincetown in the summer, which is about 30 miles away. And I was out at perhaps 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and it was that perfect, calm, still, beautiful day, a late summer day. And I remember, distinctly remember, thinking how peaceful it was. Summer tourists and many residents had already gone back to their homes and the place had this spacious, quiet calm to it. And sometime you know, after the first plane struck, I got a, a cell phone call from my wife saying, get to a television right away, something tragic has happened. And I remember leaving the beach and running to some motel nearby and asking to see if I could watch the television set. And there I saw what was going on and the second plane hitting and everything. And I immediately decided to go back to New York. And I drove to Provincetown and we started to pack up. And then through friends in New York, we found out that they weren't allowing people to either leave or to enter New York City. And so for five or six days, I waited on Cape Cod. What was that impulse to go back? Uh, what was that drawn from? I'm a native New Yorker. That was one of those things in, the, in my gut which said, you go back there and help. Be of, of some use. And I live not far away. I live within you know, a 20-minute walk of, of the towers in the West Village. So it was something that was in my daily ex experience. And during that summer, I was preparing for an exhibition to be held in October called Looking South, New York City Landscapes. And these landscapes all were from uh, my 19th Street studio, Looking South. And the main feature in the landscape were, were the, the Trade Center Towers. And I had photographed them, not them specifically, but them in the landscape for maybe 15 years. Large view camera photographs. And I had these photographs printed that summer. So I was living in a studio surrounded by the World Trade Center images. They were five feet wide. So I had these huge towers around me all summer. Well, there, there are a number of those photographs uh, in the book. And uh, what was your thought about the towers as a part of the urban landscape in New York in the pre-9-11 days? Well, you know, I watched them go up in the in the this early 70s and uh, photographed down around the landfill, Battery Park and all that. Um, they were certainly dramatic, but architecturally they never meant very much to me. I thought they were kind of boring monoliths. And, um, and to walk on the plaza around there and to be caught by the wind always was a somewhat uncomfortable experience. So I didn't have great regard for them, but they were part of the tissue, the fabric of New York, and certainly in the mountain range that I was photographing from my studio, they played their part of the, of, you know, the biggest mountains. The Mount in the, Everest in the, in the, yes, on, yeah, on the horizon. The, the Everest of New York. Yeah. So, so certainly there was a kind of um, love-hate relationship um, with those buildings.